sister. Together. Hi, I am Tara DeMarco, and I am the visual effects supervisor for Marvel Studios The Marvels. Today, we are going to be looking at the powers of our three leading ladies. Carol, Monica, and Kamala all have light-based powers. In this film, it is so important to get the look of these powers right because the characters are entangled. What the? Where's our doctor? Yes, where is Kamala? Who's Kamala? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Uh, is this an Avengers test? In our film, The Marvels, we allow Kamala to push the boundaries of the powers she unlocked in her show. She creates slides, shields, and orbs. Kamala's hard light is interesting in that it is trapped light, but we don't want it to seem self-illuminated. It isn't designed to be super glowy or stretchy. So we try really hard to keep it faceted and to look a little bit like crystal and a little bit like light. In visual effects, we always want something real for the actors to have, both so that they feel that they're doing the action and also so that there's something for us to track to later. Occasionally, we would bring in plexiglass discs for her to jump on. She also had a big plexiglass platform that she fell on for the falling swap sequence above Jersey City. I can't. Can you? I got it. In WandaVision, when Monica walked through Wanda's hex, she discovered that she could see, kind of like a spectrometer, she could see all the different wavelengths and could tune her vision to see powers or electricity or sound waves or all different things. Monica, as she grows through the marvels, discovers that she has more and more powers. She learns how to fly. We see her build up and blast. We see her invisible. We see a few forms of her intangible. Monica's intangible design in this film sometimes looks green and sometimes looks blue and sometimes it looks like all of the colors in the same way that her spectrum vision can see all different colors of the electromagnetic spectrum. But we also wanted to preserve all of the amazing performances of Tiana. So Monica, when she is intangible, is still partially visible. We did not want to turn her into an invisible person. In the finale of The Marvels, Monica really levels up. She is blasted with all of the power of Carol and all of the power of Kamala's bangles and can absorb that energy and hold it so that she can help close the Terran space-time. This was a huge power change for Monica and I think it best resembles how far she comes in the film. Carol Danvers, prodigal child of the Milky Way. Carol, AKA Captain Marvel, has her light-based power based on the jet engine of an Air Force fighter plane. We wanted Carol to be familiar to the audience in every way. She has her photon fist, her binary effect, and in this film, we wanted her to grow hotter than ever before because in the finale of our film, she restarts a sun. Carol's binary effect is made of a few different layers that we can dial up or down based on what she's doing in the scene. We never want the binary to be distracting from the performance, so we have elements that go in front of her and behind her, and depending on the nature of the shot, will increase the visibility of what's on top of her or what's behind her. The interesting thing about working on a film with three heroes is that often the design will leapfrog. A breakthrough in the look of the design of a powerful one character might lead the studio and the filmmakers to look at another character and say, hey, that person could use it too. There is a subtle flaring that we took reference from the Aurora Borealis. This was established in the first Captain Marvel film with her binary effect, and we have a hint of that effect in Monica and Kamala's powers as well. We're a team. Oh, no, 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 we're not a team. We're not a team. <gasps> The Marvels was such an exciting project to work on. We have three lady heroes, a lady villain, a Nick Fury, and an incredible female directing producing team. It was truly an honor to work with this crew.